And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a look at expansions for The Duke. The Duke is a great two-player game, a great two-player abstract game that I just love. And there are several different small expansions that you can get for it. Robin Hood, Arthurian Legends, Robert E. Howard, um, The Three Musketeers. And so we're going to take a look at those four expansion packs plus the customization one briefly and just show you the different pieces. Now I played with all of them and I can't give you super strategies with any of them because A, I'm not very good at the game and B, I'm not very good at giving strategy. But hopefully at least you can see these and decide which you'd like to add to the game. Okay, let's first look at the King Arthurian Legends. Uh, expansion. In this one, you're going to replace for the good guys, you'll replace the Duke, Champion, Assassin, Wizard, and Duchess. You'll take those out and replace them with these pieces, Arthur, Percival, Lancelot, Merlin, and Guinevere. Now, each of them has basically different things. Arthur would take the place of your Duke. Notice he can't slide around like your Duke, but he's more versatile in where he can move. He can move in all directions, and when you flip him over, he can do some pretty cool... He can jump slide ahead... He can slide ahead... Uh, jump slide ahead, he can hit the pieces around him. He's actually, I don't know if he's more powerful than a duke, but he's certainly something different. Percival is kind of a bullheaded guy. He goes straight ahead or diagonally backwards. When you flip him over, he's a little bit more versatile. So he's kind of a useful, he's a unique character. Lancelot's very similar, although I really like Lancelot's, the backside of him, since he can strike at anyone around him or slide sideways, very jump slide sideways, and he's, you can't hit him from the back. Merlin is basically just can jump straight a space in any direction, or two spaces, or he can move those around him and jump. This is kind of a weird piece for your opponent to deal with because of just how wonky the, the other side is. Guinevere has the powerful special four ability, which uh, it basically, if you capture a tile with the ransom ability, you can activate that, and so you can ransom back something. You can, you know, so actually, I guess not powerful. It's powerful for your opponent. You have to be careful that she's not captured. And she can block people from the sides. Here she can block someone from the front. So she's not like super useful, maybe, but she's there to help your opponent. Speaking of the opponent, they're going to replace their Duke and Duchess with Morgana and Mordred. Mordred, I guess, is your, is your Duke. Morgana and Mordred are much more powerful, and they make the game dangerous, especially since they both have the special ability 3, which allows them to escape. And you'll notice that Mordred can slide, he can block, she has the power to scare people, to move people around, and that's just, well, that was the, her backside. Her front side's not that useful, lets her have some maneuverability, but the backsides of, Morgana's just a pain in the neck. You're going to hate her, which I guess makes sense, because you hate her with the legends. So, this is what Arthurian Legends adds to the game. The Arthurian set also comes with this fort, which has a flip side of Camelot. And if they get, if the good guys get one of their pieces inside Camelot, they have the command ability for outside of here. If the bad guys get their piece in Camelot, they can actually turn one of the non-Arthurian legend people, let's say there's a bowman, you could turn him to your side briefly and he would work for you. And each time you use a special ability, you'd have to flip it over to a regular fort. It's an okay thing. I'm not a real big fan of using the extra pieces. I kind of like the base game as is, but some people would like this extra added flavor. All right, first we're going to take a look at the Robin Hood expansion. In the Robin Hood expansion, you're going to, the good guys, I guess, are going to be re replacing the Ranger, Footman, Assassin, and Pikeman with Robin Hood, Little John, Maid Marian, and Friar Tuck. Now, it's kind of sad to lose your Assassin, I suppose. But let's take a look at these new ones. First of all, Robin Hood actually starts the game, and he takes the place of the Duke, and the good guys are supposed to capture him. Robin Hood's a very powerful piece, as you can see. He has the ability to really jump around, and on his flip side, can shoot, slide backwards. A very versatile piece, one of the most versatile I've used. Little John is a much more solid guy, can't be hit from the back on the one side, and on the other side, can't be hit from the front diagonally, and basically just a solid, strong piece, although can't do super attacks like Robin Hood can. Maid Marian's very similar on one of her sides, but on her side actually can, can control people and can flip people some, some pretty extremes. So she's interesting in that regard, although not super powerful, 
but she has the number four ability, which is really cool and adds to her thing. And then Friar Tuck, although I think they made him a cross on purpose on the one side, on the other side, he's virtually impossible to hit from the front, so he's one of the best defensive pieces in the game. Now, the bad guys themselves are going to be replacing the champion, the duke, and the duchess with the sheriff, Sir Guy, and the Prince John. Now, the interesting thing about this is, these once you get rid of these three and you have these three pieces, all three of them have the possibility of being the Duke. There's actually like a Duke order of succession. So which one you have to capture depends on the highest ranked one on the board, which obviously is Prince John, then the Sheriff, then Sir Guy. And you have to kind of capture them all. So even though these pieces aren't as powerful probably as the Robin Hood pieces, it's, it makes for a challenging game. Although they're certainly not weak. Sir Guy himself, he's kind of erratic. You, you really have to look at him for a while, like where can he attack on this side? And on this side, he's less versatile, but still you gotta be careful. Why Prince John can't even move, but he can move those around him. He never moves, but he can move people around him in different ways. And then the sheriff is more of a solid guy who has some versatility, can move a few people around him. So I think the Robin Hood pieces are better than these guys, but because you have to capture essentially all three of them, makes for a fun and interesting game. In the Robert E. Howard expansion pack, you'll notice that the pieces here are bright red because they can be used by either player. You can decide either at the beginning of the game to draft two of them and you replace the matching pieces here. Solomon Kane gets rid of the priest, Conan gets rid of your champion, Dark Agnes gets rid of your ranger, and Cull gets rid of the wizard. Um, or you can put them on the side of the board and each time a player pulls one of these pieces, they can decide to replace it with these if they like to. Looking at these pieces, Conan has a very strong forward attack, which makes sense because he wouldn't want to retreat very much. And on his other side, again, forward, which makes him less versatile than I would like because he really can only go forward. If you have someone with command who can move him to a spot you need him to, that can be more handy, but still, you know, can be kind of, eh. Solomon Cain on this side, very boring, can only go backwards one or forward twice. On the other side, though, he becomes a beast, a beast, amazing. So you have to kind of quick use him and then get him to his really good side where it becomes powerful. Dark Agnes can jump around like almost a, a knight, basically, Dark Agnes on the one side. And then when flip over, can shoot anything beside him and move forward diagonally. A good beast, you know, not super powerful, but interesting. And then Cull can move the pieces behind him, like a conqueror would, move the folks and move forward straight ahead, and then move the pieces next to him, and then he can jump backwards or go. He's actually, I think, better than Conan. He has more of leadership skills than Conan, but all four of these pieces are interesting. Not super powerful, but enough to make you think, maybe I should take them instead of one of the other pieces in the game. For the Three Musketeers pack, essentially, you are going to have, uh, the way this works is, you have, these are the four pieces that are replaced, the Duke, Duchess, Assassin, and the Wizard. And so here you have your, your four Musketeers, Porthos, Athos, Aramis, and Titanian. And each of these Musketeers, if you notice, they are essentially exactly the same, all right? Even if we turn them over, they're a little bit different. They have special abilities on the other side, but on the front, they're exactly the same. And even on the back side, they have very similar things about them. They're striking ahead of them. This is a very thematic set. For the bad guy to win, he needs to capture all the Musketeers on the board. So you're going to pick one of them to start the game as your duke. And then if that one's captured and no other musketeers get out on the board, you've lost. If you manage to get all four of them out on the board, then he would have to capture all four of them. Uh, but the when because of this ability, since none of them is the duke, when you place new pieces, they have to kind of start in the duke's starting spot on the board. So you won't be able to use your duke to place new pieces on the board. For the bad guy, he has Rochefort, Richelieu, and De Winter. And these people, I think, are more powerful, perhaps. Again, there's only three of them, especially Rish, who has that escape ability. He can maneuver people. And when you turn them over, you'll notice that their powers are... De Winter is a really powerful person, which is kind of odd, because I, I know that she's a maneuverable person, but she doesn't seem like she would be that... I don't know. Maybe it's her. she's using her influence to move around like she does. Uh, but either way, I actually think the Three Musketeers have an advantage in the powers in this game. The disadvantage they have is that putting people on the board is not as fast as the other side, because the other side is going to use, I believe, uh, Richelieu is the Duke. Um, yes, he is. And the, But the Musketeers have some useful abilities, but capturing them, if you capture them quickly, you could end the game for the other player. 
The final expansion pack we'll look at here is the customization expansion pack. And that's just like the original game where you get a couple blank pieces and stickers where you can make them anything you want. And of course, lots of people online are gonna come up with good ideas if you can't think of any your own. Of course, if you make a super powerful piece, remember you're giving it to both sides. Now of these sets, which ones do I like playing with the most? You know what? I am pretty evenly spread on them. If I had to get just one, probably Robin Hood. Although I, uh, I really like the Three Musketeers too. Robin Hood is, seems the most changing of the game. The other ones seem that they add different pieces. Um, but I really like Robin Hood Three Musketeers, but I like the Robert E. Howard and the Arthurian Legends too. Now, I don't, you can only play with one at a time. There's no way really to mix multiples in. I guess you could. The customization cool because I like having my own pieces in the game and such, but um, I like these theme packs. They add some flavor to the game. Even having the pieces just having names, you know, this is Robin Hood shoots this and all oh, you captured Maid Marian, you jerk. You know, things like that, they add some flavor to the game and also make this game, which I already thought was cool and had lots of replayability, have even more. So if you like the Duke, and you should, um, then this is your chance to add some to it. So you can look at these and I'm assuming they'll release more expansion packs as time goes by. But this is just, these expansions make a great game even better. I don't think you need all of them, unless of course you're like me and you want to see how much variety you can have in the base game. But you should at least, I think, if you like the game, Pick one of them. Try it out. See how you like it. If you like it, then add another one. And each one is kind of like adding a new adventure to the game and new strategies you can work out with the pieces. So those are the different expansions for The Duke. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.